My name is Sanjay and I live in Bhopal. I still live in Bhopal. Uh, and I was like just a few months old baby when the disaster occurred back in 1984. I was born the same year and um, I don't really remember what actually happened that night because I was too young to remember anything. But what I know, what I've been told by my uh, sister and my brother, my elder brother and sister, and what I've heard actually from different people ever since then. So, uh, I remember like a couple of people talking about that night. I remember one woman said, one woman once said that the people who died that night, they were actually lucky because they did not live to suffer. Because the people who survive, they are actually kind of dying every day and then they do not really have like proper health care. As for my family, we were living right in front of the Union Cabaret factory in a community called J.P. Nagar. And then we were four brothers and four sisters and parents. So that night, um, three of my sisters, two of my brothers and my parents, they all died. So we were like, I, my elder brother, Sunil, my sister, we were the only two survivors from our family. And then after the family, we had some distant relative in Lucknow. They actually came over when they heard about the gas leak on radio. They came and then they started looking for us and then they found bodies, like some bodies were found in our house, some, some of our brothers and sisters, they were found in different hospitals. So, and then we were then taken to Lucknow by our uncle and my brother-in-law because one of my sisters actually she was married so she had gotten married in March 84 and then we have this like uh, kind of ritual or something that we follow that every festival after your wedding you're supposed to spend it with your family not with your in-laws my sister had come back home in December for Diwali and everything and so that night she died as well and she was pregnant so um, my uncle and my brother-in-law actually they came to Bhopal and then they took us to Lucknow with them after that and then we lived there for a year or something and then we moved back to Bhopal when my brother actually realized that they, we were not being treated well by them we were kind of like sort of like like burden on their families so we moved back to Bhopal and then the state government decided to send some of the orphans to different orphanages in Bhopal. So I and my sister, we were actually sent to this orphanage called Aswais Children's Village um, in Bhopal. My brother, he didn't really come along with this because almost right after the disaster, he got involved with the campaign. So there were about like seven to 10,000 people died in the next 72 hours of the gas leak and uh, so far more than 25,000 people have died and Bhopal gas disaster is not just something that actually happened back in 1984 it is actually an ongoing disaster because of the toxic waste lying in and around the factory uh, Back in like early 2000, uh, like people found out that how their drinking water was being contaminated because of toxic waste going into their ground every monsoon, going into their groundwater actually. And they did not know about the water they were drinking. And by the time they found out that the water they were drinking was being contaminated, it was kind of like too late. So some people living around the factory they actually had like cancer symptoms and other diseases as well and then it was perhaps Greenpeace actually there, there have been like many universities and different organizations who have like actually tested water and milk in Bhopal so it was perhaps Greenpeace tested mother's breast milk and cow's milk mm. and mercury was found in both the milk mercury and other chemicals yeah and since I, as I said, like Bhopal disaster is not like a, uh, a one-time disaster. 
it is like uh, a disaster that is still happening. So the parents who moved to Bhopal after the disaster and started living around the factory, they kept drinking contaminated water without knowing. And now because of that, their children are being born disabled with several birth deformities. Hmm. And there is no proper health care for the people who were actually there that night. There is no proper health care for the people who were forced to drink contaminated water for years. And there is no proper health care for the children being born disabled and with several birth deformities. And then, but Bhopal is not something like uh, uh, the people of Bhopal are just suffering, suffering. There have been like victories as well because we never stopped fighting. I believe like we Bhopalis, we started fighting ever since the disaster occurred and we are still fighting. So there have been victories as well. There were times when people from Bhopal, they were forced to walk to Delhi just to ask the Prime Minister for their basic rights. And some of their demands were like clean drinking water, proper health care. So I remember there was a there were, there were like about like 30, 40 people who managed to walk from both all the way from Bhopal to Delhi, and then and then there were like hundreds of Bhopalis sitting on a pavement in Delhi, protesting and then fasting, and there have been like indefinite hunger strikes as well. So I remember some of them. So we were able to meet the Prime Minister like in 2006 and 2008 in one of the meetings that he promised that he would do what he can actually do. So he provided funds to the state government and then state government started laying down pipelines. So now most of the affected communities are around the factory are having non-contaminated water supply to their houses. And most of the people now they are not drinking the groundwater what they were drinking which is which was being contaminated mm. so there have been victories as well and then um, uh, how children of the parents who got exposed to water contamination and uh, gas leak how their children are being involved with the campaign so this campaign is being like you know uh, like being, it's not just like a peop, it's not by the people who were actually there or who were drinking contaminated water. The next generation is participating as well. So, and then um, uh, still like the cleanup hasn't been done, mm -hmm. and then every monsoon toxic waste goes into the ground, contaminates the soil and water. The solar vaporation pond, which was used by Union Carbide to dump the toxic waste, still lying there. So nothing has been cleaned, cleaned, and then um, which we believe that it should be done as soon as possible, so that we can stop the further contamination. Governments, government blames the federal government, and then. At, there were times when both the government said, oh, the case is actually still pending with the court, the court. So we would do whatever the court actually directs us to do. So we can't really take any decision. And there have been like lack of funds as well. And then we believe, we people from Bhopal, we believe that, we believe in polluter pays principle. So the corporations responsible for the contamination in and around the site, they should come forward and clean up the site. They should pay for the cleanup because even in future, if our government actually decides to clean up or something, and the money they use, they it is going to be the money that we pay as a tax. So we want the corporations who are actually responsible. We want them to come forward and clean up the site. Mm.